this video is to help you walk you through number seven, eight, nine, who knows, maybe ten on your um, final exam review. This is your first final exam review for the year, the CR. So we're going to take a look at number seven. It says, which line appears to be the best fit for the data points? To be the line of best fit, you want to make sure your line pretty much goes through points so that there's the same number of points scattered above and below the line. If you look at letter A, letter A doesn't have a shot because most of the points are up above the line. The line of best fit for this set of data would be more like that. You want to try to make sure as you draw your line of best fit, the number of points above and below are the same. Letter B doesn't have a shot because if you look, all of the points are below the line of best fit. When you're looking for a line of best fit, again, you just want to take a look at your data. You want to kind of draw a line through it so that for the most part, there's approximately the same number of points scattered above and below that line of best fit. So now we're left with these two. Now there's a couple points scattered below this, but really, again, the majority for this are, are up above. So D doesn't have a shot. It's definitely going to be letter C. If you look at letter C, you can see the number uh, or the amount of points above the line of best fit is the same as the amount of points below the line of best fit. And so that, that's all that line of best fit means. If we were going to drag a line through the data, just make sure you drag that line so the amount of points above and the amount of points below are about the same. Hopefully that helps. Which of the following is a function? In order to be a function, to be a function, more than a relation, but to actually be a function, every x value, your input, your every value in your domain can, oops, can map to one and only one y value, okay? So as we look at these graphs, like if I take a look at letter C, if you look here at four, an x value of four, the x value of four is trying to map to both y is two and y is negative two. That's not allowed. X has to choose his favorite, and if he's trying to go to Y being negative 2 and also Y being positive 2, not acceptable. Each X value can map to only one Y. And so what they do is they have um, something called the vertical line test to determine if a relation is actually a function. So if I look at the vertical line test, it means anywhere on this graph that I drop a vertical line, I can pass through one and only one point on the graph. And if you look here, there's it's gonna it will be for any vertical line we draw. But if you look here and we draw a vertical line, you can see it chops through slices through our graph at two spots. That means it will not be a function. This x is trying to go to that y and that y, and each x can only go to one y. So this one fails the vertical line test. So it's not a function. All right, let's look at another one. Let's look at b. Again, if I each x can go to only one y. So if I look here, I'll just look at positive 3. When x is positive 3, x is trying to map to a y value of, it looks like 5, but it's also trying to map to a y value of negative 5. Well, that's terrible because each x can go to one and only one y. So if I drop a vertical line, like if you chose to drop your vertical line here, you'd be like, oh, yay. But you'd have to be able to drop vertical lines all the way across. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop a vertical line here. And if you see, it's chopping through your graph here, and it's intersecting through your graph here. So this one fails 
the vertical line test, it's not a function. Because you have X's trying to map to two different Y's, and that's not allowed. Um, when I used to be in the classroom, we used to have um, an activity to introduce it with lollipops, and you had to choose your favorite lollipop. You can't have two favorites. You get to have one favorite lollipop. Okay. So now we're stuck between A and D. And those are really the ones that students have a hard time with because sometimes I'll look at students' work and they'll have lots of beautiful vertical lines drawn everywhere here. But they won't address the actual relation they're given, the graph of the relation they're given. Well, I'll tell you, if I take a look at x is negative 3, right here I'm going to just label some points. This point would be negative 3, comma, 1. This point down here would be negative 3, comma, negative 3. This point right here would be negative 3, comma, negative 1. This point right here would be negative 3, comma, um, uh, positive 2. Each x can map to 1 and only 1 y. If I take a look at x equals negative 3, it's trying to map to y equals 2. It's trying to map to y equals 1. It's trying to map to y equals negative 1. It's trying to map to y equals negative 3 and lots of others. If you drop a vertical line through your relation here, you will immediately see it's not a, a function. It actually passes through an infinitely many number of um, points, and it can't. So this one fails the vertical line test. You have an x value of negative 3 trying to map to an infinite number of y values, so letter A is not a function. So then it says to you, it has to be letter D. If I look at every x value, I look at x is 1. I'm just choosing random x values. x is 1. Oh, yay! x only maps to, x equals 1 only maps to y equals 3. All right, let's look at x is, and it's approximations, but let's look at x is negative 5. x is negative 5. Oh, yay! It's only trying to map to one y value. Y in that case is negative 3. Each x is only mapping to one y. This is the function. And if you drop a vertical line anywhere, I'm going to drop a vertical line here. Oh, yay, it only crosses our graph at one spot. I'm going to drop a vertical line here. Yay, that vertical line only crosses at one spot. I'm going to drop a vertical line here. Yay, that vertical line only crosses at one spot. Letter D is absolutely a function. Yes, this is the function. It passes <laughs> the vertical line test. Anywhere I drop a vertical line, it's passing only at one point. Each, va each x value maps to 1 and only one y value. 1 maps to 3, negative 5 maps to negative 3, and so on. So the correct answer is letter D. Let's take a look at number nine. It says a paving machine may apply pressure as high as 4,250,000 pounds per square inch. So that's a lot of pressure. So every square inch, the paving machine is applying a, a pressure of 4,250,000 pounds every little square inch. What is this number expressed in scientific notation? Okay, so if we take a look at the original, you know scientific notation has to be a number between 1 and 10. So if I look at this, I say where would I have to put my decimal point to be between 1 and 10? Well, 4.25 is between 1 and 10 times 10 to some power. The, if no decimal point appears in the original, we assume it's at the end. And then we just see how many places over would I move to get my decimal point located here. So I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Moving over 6 places. And so then you'd almost be like, huh, I can't remember. Is that x to the or 10 to the positive 6 or negative 6? Well, if it's a huge original number, like 4 million, it's definitely to the positive 6 value. Negative exponents would be teeny, teeny, tiny numbers. 
um, if, if it was going to be a negative exponent, you'd have something like um, 0. 0. 0.00000425. Um, that would be that would be 4.25 times 10 to the negative 6 value. That would be a teeny, teeny, tiny number. A number between 0 and 1 would have negative exponent. Negative exponents are teeny, tiny numbers. Positive exponents are huge numbers. So the correct answer is letter A. Let's take a look at the final problem on the this CR. It says given the system x minus y equals negative 1 and 2x plus y equals 4, which of the following graphs shows the solution to the system? Now as I look at these graphs I say wow, well I could do additional elimination, there's lots of methods to go about it, but really if they give you graphs, I'd say graphically is the way because like this set of graphs has a solution of 1, 2. And this set of graphs also has a solution of 1, 2. So if you use addition elimination and you find the solution to this system is 1, 2, that ordered pair, you still won't know whether A or B are the correct answer. So really, if they give you graphs, the best way to solve the system is graphically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that first equation, x minus y equals negative 1, and I'm going to get it in the form y equals mx plus b. y equals some number times x plus some number. m would be my slope. b would be my y-intercept. Okay. Again, I, if I run out of time on this problem, I'll just have to make another video. Um, to continue it. Okay, so if I take a look here and I go ahead and solve for y, I could always start by subtracting x on both sides if I want. Then on this side I'd be left with negative y equals, I'm going to write negative x minus 1. I can really put these in either order, but I know I want my x term first for my slope, so it's easy to pull it off. And um, I know I can't shove these together, those aren't like terms. But now I'm like, I still don't have y alone. This says negative y. That means negative 1 times y. Well, if this says negative 1 times y, how do I get y alone? Oh, I divide that by negative 1. Well, if I'm going to divide that by negative 1, I must divide each term in the equation by negative 1. So this would be y equals negative times negative is a positive. Negative divided, I'm sorry, negative divided by a negative is positive. Negative divided by a negative is a positive, so that's positive x. Negative divided by a negative is 1, so that's positive 1. Okay, great. Um, and as I look at this, I say to myself, okay, now that I have this, I see that my slope is 1. My slope for this would be 1. 1 is the same as 1 over 1. That means I'd go up 1, write 1 to graph it. And then my y-intercept right here, so this gave me my slope, my y-intercept, the first point I'd want to plot, is 1. That means that on the y-axis, my graph will cross at 1. So my y-intercept is 1, so I plot the point 0, 1 to start. Okay, so I'm just going to try to graph this line and see what system it fits on. So here, right here, if I have a y-intercept of 1, so that's 0, 1, and then my slope tells me to go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, up one, right one. Okay, if I go up and to the right, I could also go down one, left one. Down one, left one. Down one, left one. All right, so this is definitely that line. Let's hope that line's not also graphed over here, because if it is, we're in no better shape. Oh, gosh, this right here is zero, one. Up one, right one. Up one, right one. Up one, right one. Up one, right one. Down one, left one. Down one, left one. Down one, left one. Oh, gosh, that's on both graphs. So we now have to get this one graphed. 2x plus y equals 4. I'm going to do this really fast. I'm going to run out of time. You're going to have to graph this one on your own. Subtract 2x on both sides. 
y equals negative 2x 